Hello everyone and now welcome to a 1v1 matchup taking place here on Northern Isle. Exlord spawning as the blue undead player on the bottom left hand side of the map going up against Starbuck, the yellow orc on the top right. For all you eagle eyed viewers out there, you guys may notice, hey, where is the overlay? Um, well, there was a micro patch that was released from uh, Blizzard. Um, it didn't break any of the replays that I had. Or, or the replays for today but um well the version number did did change and my overlay is currently not working um should be working momentarily or wor working in the next couple of hours once the w warcraft 3 warcraft 3 champions team um looks to make those updates anyways xlord opening things up here there's a crypt altar of darkness tomb of relics and a ziggurat coming in Meanwhile, Starbuck opening things up with most likely Farseer headhunters as we see a war mill and a barracks go down. Um, Heli Crota, thanks for casting. Nice play for Blizzard opening up with an update. Um, well, if, if the... I need to read what this update did. I'm not 100% sure. The fact that it didn't break any of the replays is already a, a pretty, pretty big deal for me. Um, the only thing that changed was perhaps the version number. And by changing the version number, um, it, it may be something as simple as the uh, the what the makers of the overlay team to get, hey, um, yeah, this version already supports it. Let's go ahead and just update the patch number and have it be as simple as that to let it get ready to go. Anyways, ghouls will be making their way out here momentarily. Death Knight is also going to be making an appearance momentarily as the Farseer is going to be rushing out across the field with no items, no headhunters, just those two spirit wolves. Two spirit wolves are always summoned up a little bit early as, well, it allows the Farseer to reset that cooldown on those spirit wolves while also gaining a little bit of mana back. If anyone ever wondered the or the economics of why Farseer often summon those spirit wolves so early, the spirit wolves are often so fragile that they are, and they're mainly the deal damage to absorb damage as well. But they don't usually usually die due to timed life. Um, they're often just resummoned anyways. As we're looking at the Tuscar Trapper about to fall, and now finally a Tuscar Warrior. This five four four creep camp will give that Death Knight level two. Meanwhile, Farsi are now fighting alongside some headhunters for some additional bonus damage as those Murlocs will get cleaned up easily. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, a couple of Murlocs going to get picked off here. The Farseer should be getting very close to level 2 here in just a moment. There we are getting to level 2. Has access to Chain Lightning. But at this point in the stage in the game, that Chain Lightning isn't going to be um, that effective unless he happens to come across a very low hit point ghoul much earlier than he expected. Farseer tries to get the kill, does get the kill there. Now looking to retreat back. Actually fired an... Or, um, uh, a lightning at auto attack and then followed it up with that chain lightning to do the necessary damage. All right, unit still trying to retreat back here as the Death Knight of Exlord with that unholy aura able to outrun many of those units. And I've said this in the past many years ago, like many, many years ago, that undead, one of its greatest strengths is the undead um, unholy aura, that movement speed giving um, the ability to pursue in a race that isn't supposed to be necessarily uh, that much quicker or faster. And giving that a movement speed aura is perhaps one of the biggest reasons why Undead is as powerful as it is. <coughs> Coming back across here, Death Knight still wandering around. A couple of ghouls will clean things up as the tech to tier twos are, well, nearing completion already. Coming back to the center a portion of the map, Farseer looking to clean up this Null Overseer creep camp, but the Death Knight going to come in and steal a bit of experience with that long distance death coil. Null Overseer about to get taken down. One more shot should do it. It gets taken down, picking up a Rune Bracers, which is incredibly powerful in any matchup against the undead. Suddenly, and the ability for that Farseer to absorb a little, just a little bit more damage from a Death Coil Frost Nova does well make a big, big play. All right, that last um, well Sentry Ward is cleaned up there as we're looking at another well Null getting taken down. 
Farseer sitting at level 2. Death Knight now trying to join in on the battle. J Death Knight will, it will come across here. Does have level, th or should be getting to level 3 here momentarily. There's level 3. Suddenly, level 2 Death Coil is significantly more scary. But the Farseer, remember, does have those ruined bracers. So, Death Coil instead going after a Headhunter. But the Troll Regeneration... A slightly faster regeneration rate for the win there, perhaps, as it attempts to retreat back. Death Knight, is it going to even come back across here looking for that low, low hit point headhunters? Beautiful, beautiful micro by Starbuck to lead with the well headhunters that still have a decent amount of hit points and will stay alive while poking back that Death Knight there. Death Knight may be going for, no, not going for Dark Ranger as of yet. Instead, going for Lich first as that tech to tier 3 has begun. Farseer wants to get to level 3 here. Headhunters need to join in on the battle as the lower um, hit point headhunters um, well able to heal up nicely. All right, Wand of Mana Stealing has been dropped. Skeletal Minion going to do a quick, easy scout there as the Farseer gets to level 3, opening things up for level 2 Spirit Wolves. All right, a little bit of poke damage right there. One more final shot in the back of that skeletal minion. However, not getting taken down. All right, that Tuscar Trapper still fighting here. No, no, no real reason not to clean that up. And I would have to ask a Starbuck about that if I ever see him. Um, well, not that he would remember. Who's the Starbuck player? Starbuck is Starbuck. That is his name. All uh, right, Star Starbuck. Um, so Starbuck going up against Exor. Uh, Death Coil, Frost Nova taking down one of those headhunters already. Hex quickly going down onto the Death Knight. Death Knight now being, for, uh, being forced to retreat. I think I've cast a couple of games with Starbuck. Um, often in 2v2s. So he's not a new to my channel. I'd, I'd call him a, a semi-pro. Um, a semi pro one of the players in the community who who is significantly and um, well better and as we see a death coil now oh, excuse me a hex quickly going down onto the death knight death knight now down to 121 hit points we see a wand of wind right there and this could force a scroll of town portal on from that death knight as that death knight well now needing to burn that scroll of town portal in orders to stay alive low hit point skeletal minion and going up against low hit point and um, headhunter headhunter able to retreat all the way to the back and we should be looking at well we're already getting the thorium the level two weapon upgrades but we should be getting that well um fortified armor upgrades on those burrows soon otherwise the destroyers and eventual crypt fiends will have an absolutely easy time clearing up those orc burrows and and while causing a major setback for the orc army Good morning from Florida. Good morning, 2v2s. That explains a lot. I watch a lot of 1v1 casts. Yeah, um, Starbuck is still um, pretty well known. I think I have cast a couple of 1v1s of Starbuck, but I know um, 2v2s, um, he does make a pretty good showing there as well. Level 2 now on that Shadowhunter. Farseer sitting at level 3, looking to back away. Very strong items for that, um, for that Farseer. Shadowhunter still needs a little bit more items and a, a bit more mana in order to make himself extremely useful as the Farseer now heads off to the north. Death Knight Lich also doing a bit of creep camp clearing as the Lich wants to get to level 3 already at plus 19 damage between the Orb of Corruption and those two Claws of Attack at what, 1 plus 9, 1 plus 5. Uh, auto attack of that lich actually well, dealing significant chunks of damage across the board as that last arachnid gets taken down all right corners of the creep camps now getting cleared up raider doing a good job getting a three unit surround onto that magnetar reaver right there finally and um, well, down to half life or more than half life gonna finally be taken down there as we see i believe what well, what item was dropped um, claws of attack plus 12 so the shadow hunter now with a big battle damage as well maybe given to the far seer just because well that item looks um well who has actually has the faster attack speed um shadow hunter should actually have the faster attack speed since he is the agility based hero so he may actually hold on to that item as he gets up to level three all right claws of attack plus 12 Tome of Intelligence plus two going to go on to that Farseer, getting in a little bit more damage and also a little bit more mana. W3 booster is down. There was a micro, um, there was a small patch that was released. It didn't break replays, but because the patch number changed, um, well, 
um, uh, W3 Booster needs to confirm that it works with it and update their update everything. All right, coming back through, Torin Chieftain, while picking up a handful of items, he's picking up the Rune Bracers. All right, so Torin Chieftain is going to be the one holding on to the Rune Bracers, not um, the Farseer, the more fragile hero, but the hero that is actually going to be diving on into that front line. And in addition, that, Tor that level one a Torin Chieftain already has a nine armor because of the two rings of protection. So he is, well, he is going to be able to absorb quite a bit of damage, even though he is that primary hero. Add in a pure up of vitality, and suddenly that level two Torin Chieftain is acting as the tank already. Over 900 hit points, over nine armor with reduced damage from spells. Well, I don't know what was fixed in that patch. Um, so it should, ju it could just be a very, very quick fix by pad and, or, or the, and the W3 champions team to, uh, to release or, or just update compatible versions and then be done with it. All right. The Tuscar Trapper is still here being left off to the side. Farseer staying at four, Shadowhunter staying at three. Torrent Chieftain will get just a little bit more experience as we're looking at the Berserkers now with that Berserk um, attack upgrade in a, a, a speed upgrade in addition to the Torrent Chieftain's Endurance Aura. The Northern Isles are very sparse of life, not because of the weather, but because the two armies here have pretty much cleared out every single creep camp save for this one here. So Torrent Chieftain, I, I believe, will be just a shy of level three, which, it, which could be a major, major setback here. No! pretty much on the money and a gloves of haste which will be perhaps given to the shadow hunter who will get a even who will get a faster attack speed now so plus 18 of fast a uh, fast damage going up against uh, well where is that lich lich is at plus 24 having that hood of cunning adding an additional five damage but also having gloves of haste as well all right that Lich pretty much critical striking every time it auto attacks and also removing armor significantly, greatly affecting how much damage everything else deals there. On top of this, Starbuck is now getting into 3-0 weapon upgrades, but still does not have those um, the reinforced defenses for those burrows or eventual watchtowers. Both sides here sitting inside their main base still has 10 minutes of mining left, and they're just sitting back and relaxing here a, a, a bit odd something that i'd never quite uh, remembered from northern isle games is the amount of gold that is in these starting gold mines and how you really don't need to venture out um, all that much all right i believe the expansions actually have significantly less gold no actually ten thousand gold and then nine thousand gold so your starting base has has the most amount of gold and then as you try and expand and and venture forward it has less and less gold and oddly enough all right still going into thorium armor now level two armor upgrades let's take a look at the supply count 49 supply going up against a 63 x sword already in low upkeep um and looking to looking to continue that there meanwhile one destroyer overhead gonna catch all of these orc burrows pretty much a sparse here as we are getting that thorium armor upgrade still crypt fiends have two zero upgrades um and we are also going into x lord with a couple of necromancers both sides not quite sure ready when to pull the trigger here we're still looking at well, sitting in one base, one base play on uh, both um, both sides. However, Starbuck does have the overall advantage in terms of in, in terms of upgrades. However, army size advantage definitely belonging to X Lord here. Who's going to come around with that advantage? That is the big question now. As well, the Dire Wolf trying to do a little bit of scouting, unable to really um, well, get deep in there. One destroyer now looking to retreat back. We're looking at the army is just well venturing back and forth here. Torrent Chieftain does have a potion of invisibility and a potion of invulnerability to perhaps start and initiate with that stomp. Berserker upgrades are completed. We saw that well many moments ago, and well looking to perhaps buy a couple more items. 
and indeed trying to max out on all of these items here now sitting at a thousand gold and still not sure of whether he wants to go to um, low upkeep finally going into low upkeep here dual training head headhunter oh, no, he was dual training um, berserkers um now he's dual training berserkers again uh, uh, wanted to sell some items so by by selling those items he would have been taxed on them if he was in low upkeep so he purposely stopped his production sold some items and then requeued them back up for that bit of extra gold all right here we are there's that great hall tiny great hall now getting added in that this is going to become a point of interest definitely as the death knight lich and units are now going to make their way out torrent chieftain is currently invisible is there anything to gain a sight on any of these units as we see a wolf acting as a bit of a scout here to try and keep track of everything happening all right, wolves scouting out a bit of this information. Here we are, unholy frenzy across the crypt fiends as well as they're going to be running inside against the main base here. They need to line up scroll of speed to try and rotate and pivot around. And the orc burrows are completely wide open. Voodoo Lounge quickly going to get taken down. An X Lord already being brought into play here. Torrent Chieftain going to come across here. There's a giant stomp while um, shutting down many of those units. Death Coil onto the crypt fiend. Crypt fiend um, going to end up getting taken down. Torrent Chieftain could land another stomp here. Healing wave bouncing around as the orc burrows are not really doing much of anything there goes another stomp chain lightning finishing things off as we see some more berserkers coming in from the back line now all right all of those illusion death knights really not getting engaged here as the torrent chieftain still looking to line up another stomp once more chain lightning still bouncing around stomp was used as we're looking at well more and more poking damage here torrent chieftain could try and pick up a, a potion of a mana or something as a shadow hunter actually taking quite a bit of damage wants to retreat back down to dead as the range you uh, damage from that lich perhaps just a bit too much lit shadow hunter falls at level three raiders are falling as well as we're looking at this pop-up army skeletal mass skeletal minions coming across here completely catching starbuck unaware squirrel of town portal now trying to retreat back torrent chief and places down a stomp but that damage is simply just not enough 42 supply as the skeletal minions and skeletal warriors are just um, well making a big big pressure on push here now Cryptians should be able to easily take down many of these orc burrows the expansion now getting pressured by a couple of ghouls as well but the main fight happening at the fortress as the torrent chieftain and farseer back up into a corner hoping that home field advantage will hold but it does not look like that will be the case death knight sitting at level three no level four double level up for the lich and that death knight lich still racking up quite a bit of damage with that plus 24 damage auto attack as a death coil finishes off a raider and there is the gg by starbuck solid solid game here just wait giving x lord a bit too much time to come in with strategies and get that win overall score um actually showed lower for x lord i believe the hero um, experience was a little um, was actually higher well, let's see um for okay so hero score actually was higher for starbuck even though he had a lower lower level heroes these other heroes were getting closer to, to level up losing that shadow hunter early on was a problem but the main issue was that sudden transition into necromancers and no easy way to deal with all of those skeletal minions didn't even have to bother upgrading the skeletal mages the warriors were enough to try and swarm even though they did get a bit congested Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.